Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel, welcome back. I'm Mariam and today it's Faves X Fails Time for the month of June, filmed in July, so that I can show you all of my favorite and not so favorite products of the month. As always in these videos, I'm going to be applying all of my favorite products onto my face to show you why they are my favorite rather than not. And I'll also be creating this look that is very spontaneous, very sporadic, kind of just fresh from my mind and from all of these favorite products. So I hope you love this video. I hope you find it useful. If you do, remember to subscribe and give this video those good old thumbs up. Hit that notification bell so you can watch all of my Wednesdays and Sundays videos. So with that, let's get into this faves x fails. Will this be a good month or a bad month? Hmm, I wonder. Comment below. Let's get started. Notes, as always, and per usual. This month, I actually have, shocker, two favorite primers. I know, who am I, where have I been, what have I been doing? Actually, they're both kind of different, and I put them in the primer category, but really, one is a serum, the other one is a primer. I am talking about the Natasha Denona Skin Glass Energizing and Hydrating Primer Serum, so it is a primer serum. This one, I really like. I don't think I've ever shown myself using it on camera, but I have been using it in my real life, and it is beautiful, so I'm gonna show you what it does and why I like it. This one is $48 and it has this really beautiful pearlescent finish that gives you a glow, that gives you the skin glass that you are seeking and desiring. Look at that. And really, I just did that for the camera. I would not apply that much in my real life, but I did want to show you how pretty and pearlescent it is. So what I like to do is apply this to the perimeter of my face as a sort of base. I can even apply it to my entire forehead because my forehead doesn't have much texture, except I like to avoid the center area because that's where I get very, very oily. And then I just glide it across my skin surface, across my cheekbones, my jawline, down into the neck, chin area, a little bit on the nose. I like that the serum provides a really nice slippery texture for all of your other products to go on top of. It doesn't feel oily, it doesn't feel heavy, kind of just feels like water, but it definitely gives you that glow. It gives you that glassiness. You can especially see that on my forehead, but it sets quite effortlessly. So I like this one, although I wouldn't use as much as I just did, but it is really nice. The second primer that I've been loving is not a new one. It's been around for a while. It's the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. This one is great for those of you who may have oily skin like me, if you have enlarged pores, if you have some texture, if you need mattifying, if it's the summertime, any of those reasons would be good reasons to use this primer. This one, I like to apply just to the center of my face. So I'm doing that strategic placement even with my primers. And if you haven't watched my strategic placement video on how to apply one layer of makeup, but a full face of makeup, then please check out my previous video. It's really good, if I do say so myself. And so now you can kind of see that my skin in the perimeter is still very glassy, but then the center of the face is mattified and it's perfected and the texture is smoothed down. Also, you might have noticed I look a little bit, a wee bit swollen this morning. That's because yesterday was our first beach day here in New Jersey. That's right, Jersey Shore. And you know, we went to a little tiki bar with my besties, had a couple of drinky poos, summertime vibes. And so, yeah, I might have had one too many margaritas because yeah, the face is definitely showing a little bit of that salt retention. Hmm, that's okay. Just drink water. Next, let's move on to foundation. In the foundation category, I gotta give it to Danessa Myrick still. I'm still loving the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. I'm using it all the time. I really am not reaching for much else these days. This is perfect for me. It's perfect for my skin type. It does what it used to do. And right now, I'm not really breaking out. I don't break out as much in the summertime as I do in the wintertime. This is ideal for me in the summertime months. I did include it in my previous month's Faves X Fail, so today, since I'm using all these different primers that you haven't really seen me use too much before, I'm gonna go for a different foundation. Let's go for Mother Pat, medium 15 is what I got. That's what I'm gonna be working with. This is an oldie but a goodie. I'm just shaking it up as I do. I'm just gonna use my favorite IT Cosmetics Complexion Perfection Brush. And I'm gonna blend it all out. I'm not really doing any of that strategic placement today. This foundation is very thin. It's very light coverage. And then the bronzer that I have to show you today and some of my favorite blushes, they're not exactly the same consistency. So they're not a liquid. So they're gonna need to go on top. 
Oh yes, my freckles are definitely out and about. And no matter how much SPF I put on my face, my freckles, they just always come out to play in the summertime. I don't mind. So nice, so healthy and glowy. I don't have a fail just yet, but I will. We're getting there, don't you worry. Next in a face category is my LYS bronzer stick. I really like this one, especially the shade. I think this shade is really, really beautiful. This is the No Limits Harmony. I believe that's a medium. So I'm just gonna strategically add a couple of dots here to slim my forehead a bit. Woo! Just a couple of... Uh, little spots here and there to frame my face. And then I'm gonna blend it out with the Rare Beauty foundation brush. So this LYS stick is $19, I believe. So it's not super inexpensive, but what I like about it is how easily and effortlessly it blends into your skin. I especially like it for those days where I'm doing a no makeup makeup type of look. It just becomes one so easily, and it really gives you that bronziness. This shade Harmony is perfect for a medium to tan skin tone. If you just want a little bit more of a bronzed look, it's really not too much. If you wanna do something really effortless, just add your serum or your base without any foundation and just blend this over the perimeter of your face. It looks so nice, if you have really good skin, that is. My skin, although good right now, is not always good. And still, even at its best, it's really not perfect. There are definitely some people in my industry who truly have perfect, flawless skin. And there are others who have normal, good skin, and it's totally cool. The reason why I'm even mentioning that is that sometimes I see comments on certain beauty creators' Instagram accounts or on their YouTube channels, people claiming that they're using filters and that no one's skin could possibly be that smooth. And a lot of the time, I know these people and their skin really is that damn good. And am I a wee bit jealous? Yeah, I am. But you know what? I'm gonna tell you the truth. Not everybody, and not all the time, do they use beauty filters. I remember at one point, it was a trend to use filters and everybody was using them at some point, whether it was on Instagram or here on YouTube. But at this point, the trends have changed and I know we're shifting away from all of that. So just wanna let you know, this is my skin. There's no filter on it. This is it, you're looking at it. Anyway, and this is kind of like the finished look with the LYS bronzer. I really like how it adds a little bit of warmth. It adds a little bit of shape, contour, and it's just so easy. That's what I love. I just love easy makeup. A fave. In the concealer category, I am still loving my Dominique Cosmetics Wide Awake Concealer. It's just been the one for me. From the metal tip wand, to how beautifully and naturally brightening it is, to how long lasting it is. I just love everything about this product. And so I'm gonna continue using it, even though I've already talked about it in my previous month's faves. I love how cooling the applicator feels. Fills. My Laura Lee feels, sorry. Hi Laura. I'm gonna blend that out with this hourglass brush. I also have a pimple coming through right here. So I'm gonna use this concealer to brighten, but also conceal. Here in this area, I like to pop out the hollows of my nostril folds, just like that. Blending out the eyes last. Not covering too much of the freckles. We love the freckles around here. But there was a time in my life where I would use full coverage just so I could cover my freckles. I was that girl. Someone in my elementary school once told me, You're the only Asian I know with freckles. And I remember that striking me kind of odd. And I guess it made me feel a little bit self-conscious. So from that point on, I was like, must cover, must the, cover the, freckles. the freckles, kids. But not no more. I've grown up since then. Are we ready for a fail or not yet? Should we keep going with the positive? I think so. I feel very positive lately and um, well I have a new powder that I feel very positive about it's in the faves category and it is from Laura Mercier it's the new tone up translucent loose setting powder in the shade rose so this one has a rosy tint or like a pinky tint and I like this sort of tint specifically for the under eye specifically for the center of the face I think the rosy powder tint adds a freshness to your face it adds a nice little glow so that's kind of what I've been using it for Charlotte T picking up a little bit of product, concentrating most of it in the under eye area, but then also bringing it down to the pore zone, around the nostril folds, kind of like along the side of the nose. And look how nice. It just looks so smooth and so naturally bright compared to this side, where this side looks good, but it's not as smooth. 
So now I'm gonna smooth it out. So now this is a $40 product. I believe all of Laura Mercier's powders are $40, but this shade I specifically like more than others. I feel that her translucent setting powder, the original shade, tends to change up the shade of your concealer or foundation. I don't know if it's just me or if you guys have noticed that as well, but lately I haven't been a fan of it. Just because once I find a concealer or a foundation that I really like or the combo that I like that works for me, I don't necessarily want to change the color. I don't want to shift it more yellow or like more cream. That's what that shade does for me. It just shifts the color of my concealer a little too much and not in the right direction. This one shifts it as well, but I like the rosy tint. This one is clearly like a translucent with a rosy hint to it. And that I can appreciate. Oh, cat hair. Meow. So basically I just set the center of the face. I didn't really do much to the perimeter. For the perimeter, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this Makeup Forever Ultra HD setting powder in the shade Banana. I like this one. I've always liked it, but specifically I like it more for the summertime rather than for the wintertime because this is a very, very, very matte powder. I also feel like it can make your sheer coverage foundation look a little bit more full coverage. So kind of like defeats the purpose of a sheer coverage. So you have to use this very spare and very strategically, very thoughtfully. So I'm gonna use this big brush. This one is from Tarte. I don't know if they still sell it. I call it my ice cream cone brush. It's just what it reminds me of. Just like to add the tiniest amount of product and just like stamp it into my skin, kind of like that. You see how it just mattified everything? It's good, but it may not be what you're looking for necessarily, right? I kind of was feeling the little bit of dew, but I still like this product, still reach for it, but just have to be mindful. This month in the brow category, I'm liking this new product from Bay Brow. It's called the Hold Up Brow Styling Wax. I actually had never heard of this brand before until I received it in PR, and sometimes, I get products in the mail from brands I've never heard about. Sometimes I get on these like PR firm lists or whatever, and people just send me stuff. Sometimes I try it, sometimes I don't, but this looked cute. I like this little tin, I like the brush. And so I gave it a chance and I really liked it. I like the fact that this isn't like a traditional brow wax where it feels very waxy. Instead, I think this is a hybrid, a gel mixed with a wax. I like the scent. I like how easy it is to use. It gives you enough playing time to set your brow to whatever shape you desire. It works on even my very, very, very straight brows and it just grooms them perfectly. There's enough product in here to really last you a while. I believe this is a $37 product, but I just checked and it is on sale for like 34 or 35. So I don't know, I quite like it. Granted, it doesn't hold up the ends of my brows all day, but it still keeps them groomed. So that's what I appreciate. I'm gonna grab my NYX Lift and Snatch just to finish up the brow very quickly. I'm gonna skim through this part because you've seen me do this a hundred thousand times. Oh no. All right, I think my NYX Lift and Snatch brow pen is on its last breath. It's actually starting to bleed and spew out too much color. And so it's not applying properly. No, no. Yeah, that's really bad. Well, well, we will fix that later. Let's move on to the color categories in which I have quite a number of fails this month. But before I do, JK, I've got some favorite powders, blushes rather, that I would like to mention, because I totally forgot about blush. But one of my favorite blushes for the month is actually from Benefit. I've been loving their new blushes, all these cute new summery shades and all this packaging. So they no longer include the brush that was always in their Kula bronzer and other blushes. So now there's no blush, brush, but there are new blush shades. So that's what I've been liking. So these are $17 each. You can basically collect them all. Some of my favorite favorite shades are Butterfly, Shelly, Peachin, Dandelion. There's one more, I don't have it in front of me. It's the shade Krista. It's a really beautiful bright shade. I just don't have it in front of me. It's my other room, but Krista as well. But I actually have another fave in the blush category and it's from Mother Pat, Pat McGrath Labs. Skin Fetish Divine Blush Duo in the shade Divine Rose 2. This has probably been my most used blush shade in this past month. This is gorgeous. This is a duo blush. 
So we've got like a peachy shade here and a more pinky shade. Matches my little clip over here. I've been using the pinky shade a lot, but the peachy shade is really nice too. I also have the shade Paradise Glow. So this one is a more neutral blush. I haven't used this as much, but still, I like the option. One of the shades, I think it's the one with the roses, is a little bit more luminous. And this is what I specifically like so much about this product, is that it offers a luminous blush but without looking metallic, without looking too shimmery, and without enhancing any of your texture. I've showed this one many times in my previous videos, but I guess maybe I should show it again. It has been my most used blush this month, so I might as well just show you again. For blush, I like to use a really big brush, because hello, big cheeks, need a big blush brush. I'm gonna start off by dipping it into the outer shade and kind of just hugging my entire cheek with it. For me, honestly, this brush is not even big enough. I need something huge in order to hug this entire cheek. This one is the Ultimate Bronze from Sigma, but because I'm being very specific with which color I'm picking up, I'm just gonna use this one. So I'm starting off light, just kind of swiping it all across into the temple. And then once I have a desired amount of the peachy shade, then I'm gonna go in with the pink. I'm gonna smile. I'm gonna pop it right on top, but just to the highest point. So this is the shade that adds a lot of luminosity and a lot of glow, but look how flattering it looks. You're not seeing enhanced texture, you're just seeing glow. That's what I like. And it is bright. It is very, very bright, but it's a flattering bright. It's not a very intimidating type of blush where you'll feel like you look like a clown. I actually think this adds to the face. It just gives it that juiciness, you know? All right, now let's move on to some other color products, mainly in the eye and in the lip category, where I have quite a few fails. Sad but true. Actually, in the eye palettes and just like eyeshadow category, this month I have absolutely no faves. It's kind of a shocker for me because I always find something in the eyeshadow category that I love every single month. But this time, I was really disappointed. There hasn't been anything innovative, nothing new, nothing that I hadn't seen before, no color story that really made me go wow. Everything's been pretty damn boring, if I'm being quite frank. Moreover, some of the products that I've tried in the eye category were just like straight up duds. They were straight up fails. Sadly and unfortunately, I am talking about Halsey's brand, About Face, and these shadow sticks. These, <laughs> did absolutely nothing for me. I can't even like say it in the nicer way. They didn't deliver. They look really cute in the packaging. The colors look like they're promising, like they would deliver, but unfortunately they were just a little too pale. They paled in comparison to say some of the color pop shadow sticks that we're used to, which are a lot more pigmented, which are a lot more punchy. And for the summertime, personally, I am someone who wants more color. I want more punchier, more daring, more bold shades, and these were just like lukewarm. They were not hot, they were not sizzling. Sorry to put it this way, but it's just the way that it is. I mean, were they okay? Yeah, they were okay, I guess not everybody likes punchy colors, but damn it, it's the summertime. Give me options, give me a variety, give me like a really vibrant lime green, and maybe like a subdued sky blue, you know? But all of them were very subdued, and for $14, I don't know, I'd rather go to ColourPop and buy the same stuff, but better quality at $7. That's just how I feel. That's just my experience. Still getting to know this brand. I guess they're trying to do something different, something outside of the box. I just haven't really uh, been impressed just yet, but I'm gonna give them a chance. Similarly, hmm, I was kind of disappointed with these uh, Kaja Beauty eye trios. These looked really, really, really cute and really promising, especially for travel. This design is really great. Features three different eyeshadows, a matte one, a shimmery one, and a foiled one. And individually, these shadows are pretty good, although the matte one is very light. In terms of pigment, it offers a very sheer amount of pigment, um, whereas the metallic and the foiled are almost too pigmented. So I get it that they are a K-Beauty brand and I get that the styles of makeup are very different from a K-Beauty perspective, but for me, I just didn't find myself reaching for them and I really wanted to. I really wanted to find an occasion to reach for these more often, but mm, I guess I was just a little underwhelmed. Not a straight up fail, because like I said, the individual shades are nice, but it's hard to put them to use together. I didn't have a reason to be just traveling with this. Like if I wanted to use the foils or the shimmers, I needed a much 
much more pigmented matte base in order to make it work. I hope that makes sense. All right, moving on to some liners that I'm sad that this brand created liners that straight up did not work. <sighs> Unfortunately, I'm talking about my beloved Essence Lash Princess line, and I'm talking about their new princess liners. So these liners are $5 each, very inexpensive, but just because it's less expensive, just because it's cheaper does not mean that it's better. And in this instance, this actually means that it's worse. Sadly, I did not like the black waterproof version. I did not like the regular black version, nor did I like the brown. These dried up so fast. I think I might have used the black waterproof liner twice before it became completely dry. That is a waste of five bucks if you ask me. So to me, these are an absolute fail, even though I love Essence as a brand. They're one of my favorite go-to drugstore brands. All of their products are so inexpensive. Their mascaras, their Lash Princess mascaras are some of my faves, but this liner just was not good enough. Plain and simple, it wasn't good enough. In the fave category, however, another liner from the drugstore that I did appreciate is actually the L'Oreal Infallible Grip. 30 hour precision felt liner. So I actually have been using the black one a lot and it's a felt liner, which usually they dry up very quickly after you apply them after shadow or on top of shadow rather. This one though, still pretty moist. The tip is pretty workable, which I can't say about this. But anyway, these I really like. These are about $12. You can get them also at Ulta or at any drugstore. What I like is that they also offer different colors. I obviously have not tried this green, but I will be trying it today, right now, because I do like the black, so I'm hoping that the green is just as good. They also have it in a gray, in a brown, and maybe like in a gunmetal, or maybe I'm confusing it with something else. This one's pretty decent in the black. Hopefully it also is in the green. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely not bad. I like the fact that it's not an obvious shade of green, it's more like a teal green, so a little bit more interesting than what you would typically see, but it definitely is very easy to use. It just adds a little bit, like a hint of color. I like it, I like the black, a fave for the month, for sure. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is curl my lashes because I am gonna apply a mascara that's not a waterproof mascara, but it's a mascara that I like, and it's a favorite of mine for the month. I am talking about none other than Lancome Le Wheat Hypnose Mascara. I think it's called Le Wheat Hypnose because it actually is shaped in the figure eight. So that's what's so cool about it. First of all, the packaging is absolutely breathtaking. It is so cool and it's so bougie and it just makes you feel like such a diva applying this mascara on. Secondly, this smells incredible. It smells like one of Lancome's Perfumes, which I like, though I'm not sure if this is a good thing to have something so perfumey so close to your lashes. But actually, what I also like about this $32 mascara, although it's pricey, is that it actually works and it makes your lashes look really nice. I like this very simple wand, even though it's also shaped like a figure eight, but the formula just feels very clean. It makes your lashes look very groomed and clean, not too clumpy, not too crazy. If you already have very long, very full lashes, it will do wonders for your naturally long and full lashes. But for me, it just gives them a nice, clean, perfected feeling. So you probably can't really tell what it looks like, but this is one coat on my very short little lashes. I'm gonna add a second coat and boom. So if you're someone who's into luxury makeup, if you love luxury packaging, you will probably love this mascara because it is very luxurious. This is glass, it feels very cool, it feels very expensive, it looks great, and I don't know, to me, this is something that I would keep just as like keepsake because the shape is just so cool and so different. I've never really seen anything like that before. I like it. It's kind of like a collectible. Yeah. In the lip category, my favorite for the month has been, oh, I'm just gonna whip it out. I've been loving the REM Beauty lippies, pretty much all of them actually. I am obsessed with the lip liners. They are so easy to use. They're very smooth and very soft. I really like the packaging. I think the packaging is pretty genius. Pretty intuitive. It even has a little sharpener on the bottom that you can use. This bottom section retracts the pencil. Basically, it's very, very easy to use and the quality is really great. I like the liquid lipsticks, but my absolute favorite product 
probably of the entire month is actually REM Beauty's traditional lipstick. This is probably the most pigmented, yet the skinniest lipstick I have ever tried. Maybe ever. I definitely, most certainly, was inspired to create my very first Team Truth video, a recommendations video on IG. I've never done that before on IG. I don't treat my Instagram account as an account where I recommend makeup. In fact, it's much more of a lifestyle. It's much more of a style and fashion and just like makeup inspo type of page. But this product was so good that I actually was like, yo, you need to have it. Is that good? I've never seen so much pigment packed into a little lipstick. This shade, Attitude, the red, is definitely my fave, but I'm not gonna wear it today because I'm wearing a green lip liner and it's clearly not Christmas. So I'm gonna go for a nude. The nude shade lingerie is absolutely stunning. It's such a beautiful shade of nude. And for that, I'm also gonna use the lip liner Harmonies to line my lips to give them a little bit more shape and a little bit more definition. So now watch this. Literally a one swipe formula. And it feels super comfortable, super weightless on the lips. You don't even need to press hard for pigment. That's how pigmented it is. I love it. I really, really, really think they killed it with the lipsticks, specifically the traditional lipstick in this really cute packaging. I also like the liquid lipsticks. I also like their lip oils. And I also like the bomb. Everything from that collection was basically up my alley. And I don't know how you guys feel about REM Beauty. I know a lot of people have been underwhelmed with the brand to say the least, but I gotta say I haven't felt that notion whatsoever. In fact, there are quite a number of things in the Aria Beauty line that I use in my daily life. I really like their eyeshadow palettes. I think the colors are quirky. The formulas are really buttery. I like them. I haven't actually had a bad experience with any of their products yet. I'm gonna grab another lip liner real quick. This one is Lyrics. It's just like a darker, more mauve lip liner shade. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of an ombre border around the corners, just like this. And yeah. I just love it. Moving on to a lip product that I wasn't very impressed with. This month, sadly, I wasn't too impressed with these Victoria Beckham Posh Lip Glosses at $28 each. These you could pretty much find anywhere. These weren't very different from any other gloss outside of like the heavier packaging and just like the Victoria Beckham name. But really these colors are fairly boring. They're colors you've seen a thousand million times all over the beauty space from every single brand. But to me, I guess there was nothing innovative. There was nothing new. And at $28, I just thought it was a little bit of a ripoff considering how non-innovative or how not different they were. So yeah, to me, it was an okay gloss that maybe I would use, but most likely I would definitely forget about it because it just was not a standout product. So that's how I feel about that. And last but not least, in the faves category is a highlighter. I have not been impressed with a highlighter in a minute. And by a minute, I mean like a year at least. Finally, I am impressed with a highlighter and it is from none other than Sigma. I really, really like their new highlighters. I'm not really sure if there's a specific name for them, but basically this is what they look like. This is the packaging. These are $35 each. There's about six new shades and they range from very cool opalescent to gold, to pale gold, to rose gold, and to like more bronzy. So today I'm gonna go for the shade Sizzle, which looks like a pale, like champagne gold. I really want my cheekbones to pop. These definitely remind me of those beaming bright highlighters from a few years ago, but although they are beaming and although they are booming, the formula is much lighter and it feels a lot more forgiving on the skin. And it's one of those formulas that you can definitely sheer out if you don't want that much of a pop, or you can layer it or thin it out, which is what I just did. But definitely a highlighter that has caught my attention. And it's a product that I'm gonna continue using. So it is in my faves category this month. So with that, you guys, I'm complete with a full face of faves, but not fails kind of easy breezy summerful. It's the vibe that I was going for. Just a little pop, nothing too serious. Something very approachable and very wearable using all of my favorite products for the month of June. So with that, it is time for me to say farewell. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, for tuning in and for being amazing. I will see you in my next video. For now, you can definitely see more me in 
my other videos that I have over here. I link them there for a reason, so click on them. Peace out, and I'm out.